So let me turn it over to you, Walter. Great, thanks, Bill. Uh, like Bill said, um, just as a quick introduction, I'm the Director of Data and Platform Services and in Information uh, ISNT, uh, Information Services and Technology on Campus. Uh, as such, we have a number of different teams that are doing different things on the, you know, capital T, capital C, the cloud. Uh, with us today, we have we have our own on-prem private cloud, which we run through VMware. Uh, with us today, we have Robert Amos uh, is on the call, and he's he's. If you have any questions about that, I'm going to point you to him. You know, he's also leading the team that's doing uh, some of the work that we've done on Amazon, and I'll I'll touch a little bit on Amazon further on here in the presentation. Uh, we also have a, a lot of work uh, that's happening right now on Google. We have Yoshi and Yoshida that I think I saw on the call today that uh, are helping us with that. So I might I might call on them at some point during the presentation. Uh, and we've also got Azure. You know, Azure's in the mix too. And I see Greg uh, has joined us, and he's been really pushing some of the uh, envelope there on Azure. And Blaine is with us as well. So from our team, he is he is helping us uh, with that also. So with that, what I thought I would do is I would um, talk a little bit about uh, GCP today. We've talked you know, a lot about Amazon in the, in the past. What I thought we'd do is talk a little bit about our GCP status and where we're going with Google uh, at this point and what we've got uh, set up. Uh, and then I'll touch a little bit on, um, I'll touch a little bit on uh, Amazon at the end. So sit right back uh, and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip uh, that our G Suite team took when they went to um, Indiana, uh, they attended a conference and saw a presentation from Indiana University. Uh, and this presentation highlighted the fact that by default, anybody with an enterprise login uh, can actually create and um, they can actually create and a project and a billing ID within your org. And by your org, I'm talking about uh, berkeley.edu. So Google actually gives you a $300 credit to do this. And that's either $300 to use, or it's actually um, for a whole year. You can, you can spend that $300 for a whole year. And what that results in is a lot of orphan projects, basically. So when our G Suite team came back and took a look, it turns out we had like around 14,000 projects in the Berkeley org. Uh, including several Bitcoin miners uh, that they took care of, you know, in rapid fashion. Essentially, you know, that $300 credit is still out there. So I just, in putting this presentation together, I ended up on this page from a link from our Cloud Resource Center at Berkeley. And in fact, that $300 credit is still out there. So it's it's definitely an ongoing uh, opportunity, I'll say, uh, for us uh, to take a look at. But basically, when our G Suite team came back and took a look at that, they realized that our Google org was essentially, um, well, it was the Wild West. And so they engaged a company, a third party company called Burwood to help them clean up that org. And we in data and platform services at about the same time, uh, we were beginning to put together a Kubernetes service for campus. So what we were, the vision there was to put together a, a service that we would run centrally, that would run Kubernetes, that people could actually bring in their containers and, and we could manage them uh, through that service. And so we went to Google and went to GCP because we had heard that that was the best place to set up a Kubernetes type service. So we hooked up with, uh, I see, I think Rob is on the call too. We hooked up with the G Suite team and started talking with them about their engagement with Burwood and how they were doing uh, cleanup basically within our GCP environment to make it operational. So we we grabbed the ball from the G Suite team. Typically in these uh, in, in different organizations, uh, the G Suite team is separate from the the, uh, uh, the Google Cloud team. So that's what we've what we've got here. And we picked up the ball with Burwood. And for the past I would say probably year or so, we've been working with Burwood to refine our GCP environment and in order to make it a little bit more operational. So what I wanted to cover today was just some of these things on the list. So we'll start off with org structure and talk about billing a little bit, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, right now, essentially what we've done uh, from an organizational structure within our Google environment. So our environment is that berkeley.edu umbrella. The way that Google is set up, you, you structure things in different folders. And then underneath those different folders, you have projects. So we've set up an administration you know, folder that has a lot of the over, you know, the monitoring, the automation, et cetera. Uh, there's an academic folder with specific studies that could be set up within that academic area. The learning folder is where a lot of the projects have been moved um, that are the experiments that, that students and staff or faculty will do uh, when they set up those free credits. 
We set up a sensitive area for, you know, in the future for hosting HIPAA type data. And then there's also a research uh, set of folders for people, for researchers that can go in and, and use those different kinds of areas. Again, the way Google is, is organized, you have your organization. So we have at berkeley.edu. And then underneath that organization, as you just saw, there's different folders that are out there. Different folders can contain a number of different projects and projects are really the, the coin of the realm in terms of Google. Underneath those projects, that's where you actually see the different Google components come into play. So things like virtual compute, virtual database, uh, Kubernetes as a service. And then the way we have it set up that is that there's one billing account that could, that could address multiple different projects out there. As we were going through the setup of this with Burwood, this is how we had it set up originally. And as we were talking to our Google reps, they rapidly realized that we're actually, as is &T, we really want to set this up to function as a reseller. So we basically want to set this up in a similar way that we've set up our Amazon central payer account, in that we're going to have a central payer account that is &T will will manage. And then the, um, the different sub accounts that are underneath there would manage their own environments. So that's why we went to this type of an arrangement so that we'll have a one billing account in different billing sub accounts. And these billing sub accounts will then contain a, a number of different projects. The reason this is significant is that the previous, uh, the previous way that we had this set up with the different uh, projects that were kind of muddied together, this, these sub accounts actually have a firm um, delineation such that if a researcher comes to us and has research credits, they'll be able to contain those research credits within one sub account and they won't be shared amongst a number of them, which is what would have happened in that previous iteration. So we feel pretty good about that in the way that this is set up at this point. And again, just as a, as a quick uh, brief how this is going to work going forward, if um, people want to use GCP and they want to have their billing, um, the billing taken care of, you'll basically come to us with a chart string and we can set you up with a chart string at the sub account level. IS and T will take care of the master bill, you know, at, um, at the month end, and we will basically recharge all the charges to the different sub accounts uh, just on a pass through basis. This kind of gives you some sense of the billing dashboards that we've been looking at too. And you can see we were kind of doing some experimentation through November, and then we started adding some sub accounts out there. And you can see the, the um, amount that we've actually started paying Google has jumped up from essentially nothing to about $5,000 a month. Uh, you know, and within the billing dashboard, you can see the different projects that are out there. I, I personally like this one, which is, you know, the top projects that we have. It shows the top projects and then the top products that we're actually using. We're mainly using, you can see Compute Engine, some cloud storage, a little bit of cloud SQL, and here's Kubernetes on the side. That was the, what we had originally gone in. The big, um, you know, the big gorilla in the room these days is Breakthrough Listen. So when we had Breakthrough Listen come in, they're the ones that jacked it up to about Five thousand, you know, dollars a month um, that's out there, and and that's uh, you know, and that's steady. So that's basically um, looking for aliens, you know, using Google. So they're the ones that are using a lot of that compute engine. So that's those are the first little pieces there. A few other items that I just wanted to cover um, right now. We're setting up connectivity between Google and Berkeley. Um, the way that Google is, uh, is insisting that we do this is through BGP, which is the Border Gateway Protocol. Uh, I've learned more about Border Gateway Protocol in the last month or two, Just and, and the only things I really know about it are the fact that that's, this is a, um, a way that you address different um, entities out on the internet. And if you set it up incorrectly, you can break the internet. Um, we actually did that in November, uh, where we were trying to roll this out and, and some things broke. Um, we rapidly rolled it back again. And right now we're working with the network team to try to set this up. Um, it, it's, it's important if you want to land something within Google and be able to talk back to campus for camp, on-campus resources. So once we get that set up, we'll be able to have that connectivity set up right now. Uh, but for the time being, things that are, the only things that are out there in our Google environment are things that are relatively independent, like um, the Breakthrough Listen project. They don't need to communicate back to campus. Our original thought going into this was that we were going to have a Kubernetes service. Uh, it turns out that um, Kubernetes is dead easy to deploy uh, once you get into GCP. So again, you can you can talk to Yoshi, who's with us on the call today. Um, he actually spent a better part of a year up at Haas implementing Kubernetes on bare metal. We brought him in to help us set this up as a service within Google, and it turns out we're we're pivoting a little bit because the actual Setting up Google as our Kubernetes as a service is really super easy, and it's not really what we need right now. It's really what we need is 
the ability to actually bring people in into Google right now. And if you need to use Kubernetes, we can certainly help you set that up as a, as a service underneath your project. But that's really um, what we're really doing now is really setting up people within Google and giving people the opportunity to use GCP in a much easier fashion, similar to the way that we have uh, Amazon set up right now as well. You might ask your, you might ask me or yourself, what happened to those 14,000 accounts that are still out there uh, that we had originally found? Uh, they're still out there. They're under the Berkeley org and not, they're not under the billing account. They're basically being billed if they need to be billed to whoever set them up in the first place. Uh, they're still under the Berkeley org. If, if in fact you own some of those uh, projects and you wanted to get a folder which will help you organize your projects or fall into this current organizational structure, you can send an email to this uh, address, the gcp-cloud-ticket at berkeley.edu. That goes into a service now queue and we can help you work with that. Uh, if you want to come in under the central payer account, that way you'll be able to come under the UCOP agreement with Google uh, and we'll take care of the billing like I referenced before. And you control your own sub account, whatever you want to do underneath there in terms of projects. So you can send a note to that same uh, GCP cloud ticket uh, address. And if you come to us with a chart string, we can certainly set that up. Uh, and that's been a real benefit to a number of different people that uh, we've worked with at this point. We are right now, to be, you know, to be honest, I still need a MSSCI slash IS3 assessment for the higher protection level data that might be coming in uh, from out into Google. Uh, and we're working with the ISO office on that. Uh, right now we're in the midst of changing the MSSCI assessment uh, for campus, which is the minimum security standards for electronic information to incorporate IS3, which is the latest um, security constructs from UCOP. That's probably a year long process to make sure that that gets up to speed. Um, but we are gonna try to get through and, and at least get an MSSCI assess assessment done for um, this environment, similar to what we're doing um, at a sub account level over on Amazon as well. Let's see, next step. So I, I can share these slides afterwards as well. There's, there's a good uh, few links in here about getting started with the Google Cloud Platform. Uh, and again, if you wanted to request a folder for your group or your lab, um, you could submit it to that GCP cloud ticket. And again, you, if you have a chart string and you want to come under the billing auspices of this, uh, of this GCP environment, we've got a form you can fill out and that's a Google form that you can, that, uh, you can fill out and we'll get you charged via that, via that chart string. Uh, and future steps, just in terms of this, we, we need to make sure that we get uh, the MSSEI assessment done. We basically need to get that BGP, BGP connectivity established between uh, Google and our on-prem data center here at Warren. Um, and then we're looking at tools right now to identify the GCP account owners associated to the G Suite account. So we know that there are some tools that are out there and we've been working with Rob about trying to figure that out. And um, that's one of the things that we wanted to uh, continue to look for because what we like to do is reach out and find the people on the on campus that might be large um, you know doing a lot of work within Google that might benefit from coming in under a master agreement uh, that we have out there that's very similar to Amazon and so if you'll um, if you'll humor me just a bit here I'm going to walk over to this Amazon presentation so that was Google uh, what we'll do is let me just touch a little bit on Amazon here as well uh, in terms of our central payer account. This, is, um, this has been set up for a little bit longer uh, at this point. And the central payer account is again, the similar in terms of having a centralized account that we will actually take care of the billing process with the uh, public cloud provider. And then we'll turn around and through Pinnacle, we'll recharge uh, on just a pass-through basis, the different sub accounts that are out there. Um, one thing I wanted to say is, if you wanted to do that too, you could send a note to bcloud at berkeley.edu. Um, and I just wanted to touch base on this real quickly, just to show you, uh, I'm, I'm part of a group that does the whole UC um, cloud spin. And so this kind of gives you some sense of across the entire University of California, this is the kind of cloud spin that we're looking at. This is Amazon at the top, obviously. Google, we're just starting. Uh, and Azure is somewhere there in the middle. I, I just found that one interesting just because, you know, it just shows you the, the degree to which we're all using Amazon at this point. Um, and then this kind of shows you the spend that we've got across the UCs in the last 12 months as well. So, you know, UC Santa Cruz went in early and, and they're spending the most. Berkeley is down here towards the middle. And this is what surprised me is that we're actually spending at Amazon, we're spending in the range of, you know, 70 to $80,000 a month. 
uh, out at Amazon. And the interesting thing about that is that that seventy or eighty thousand dollars a month, ninety percent of that is outside of the EDP, which is the Enterprise Discount Program. So when we say we've got a central payer account in both um, Amazon and Google, what that means is that we've got a central payer account that falls underneath the auspices of the UCOP agreement with each one of these public cloud providers. And by moving into that UCOP agreement, you get some sort of a discount. At this point, Amazon is up to 13% discount right off the top. So when you look at that on here, well, only 10% of that is falling underneath that EDP program, as opposed to, for example, Santa Cruz, where they have, you know, 97% of it is under that EDP. Um, that becomes significant when you start thinking about all the accounts that we have out there that are spending money with Amazon, or Google in this case too, that are not getting the discount that they could be, they could be getting. So here's a list that I actually got from that UC uh, Cloud Providers uh, group. We had a meeting of, of this yesterday, and these are the non- EDP top spenders. So these are the people that would fall into that 90% category that are outside of the enterprise discount program. And you can see that, you know, some of the big ones like MyShake or, you know, there's some other ones down here as well. They're, they're UCB owned that are falling outside of the enterprise discount program. They're, they're spending some significant amounts of money. So for example, if, you know, if MyShake, for example, they're spending $20,000 a month under the central payer account, we save them 13% or $2,700 a month. And it goes all the way down to some individual resources like Hani Farid, who's spending $3,300 a month. And it was, you know, we could save you $429 a month. So if you're interested in that kind of saving, all that requires is sending an email to this bcloud uh, at berkeley.edu, and we'll bring you in underneath that, um, that central payer account. That'll allow you to get that, that kind of a discount. And again, we're not exerting much control on top of that. We're basically just taking care of the billing, and, and you take care of the rest on so that's the current that's the current vision that we have right there for Amazon. So I'm going to um, I'm going to stop sharing at this point so I can see everybody again, and then I will ask. I'll check the chat, and I'll ask if anybody has any kind of questions or anything that they'd like to to ask about at this point. Oh no, I didn't do that well. Come on, there's got to be questions. So there is a question in the chat from Kevin Chan. Uh, Walter is bcloud at berkeley.edu, also the email to send new AWS requests. Yes, please. Yep, that's going to be the one that we're going to use for AWS. And then GCP cloud ticket will be the one that we use for other ones. We do have a list. And what we're doing, just to give people an idea, we do have a list of those requests that have come in at this point. And what we're doing is we're trying to work down the list slowly and steadily. Uh, and bring people in uh, so that they can they can come in underneath that that agreement. Uh, but it's you know as you can imagine we're a small team and we're just trying to work with people as we can uh, to bring them in underneath that agreement. Are we focusing uh, your Kubernetes work on GCP? Yes, actually, what we found with Kubernetes it's a whole other conversation, um, and I I can pass that one off to Yoshi too if Yoshi wanted to comment on that as well. Um, what we found over the uh, course of time, we've worked real closely with UV uh, Panda and Jonathan Felder, um, and they've been using probably the most uh, amount of Kubernetes on campus at this point in their support of the data science curriculum. Uh, and what we found is that by the fact that the data science and data, the classes for data science have been able to move around um, by using everything in a containerized fashion, they first I think they first landed on maybe AWS and maybe they've tried Azure. We tried them up on bare metal up at Haas. That's where Yoshi came into play. Uh, and then we've also tried it on Google and it turns out the Kubernetes um, offering on Google is really easy to do and um, very easy to set up. So we'd be happy to uh, work with you on that if you're interested in that. Uh, but that's that's really where we're pursuing that on, on GCP mainly because it's, it's um, easy to do uh, on GCP there. And uh, this is great. Uh, if anyone is doing uh, Kubernetes and Azure, I'd, I'd love to chat. Um, yep. I've, I've kind of got it with some of the help from UV and others. Um, it's pretty easy to fire something up. Excellent. I should I should say thanks, Greg. Uh, Greg is also leading the charge on Azure at this point too. So you might you might remember Greg from his days at Amazon Web Services and uh, you know his his talks to us then. But now he's moved over to Azure, so he's exploring yeah. that and uh, is setting up. Um, Groups of people that we can talk about how Azure rolls forward too. So, uh, and on and on Azure, we're looking for um, 
getting into a centralized payer type of agreement with ISNT on Azure as well. Uh, it requires going through a few more hoops. So we're, we're setting that up now uh, and we're trying to get that going. So our vision in the future is basically so that anybody on campus, uh, if you, if you want to have on-prem uh, VMs, for example, to run compute in that, we certainly have uh, that inside of our data center. And that's a robust feature and offering that we will continue to support for years into the future. Uh, if you have, for example, if campus researchers come to us though, and they have credits that are only applicable on AWS or GCP or Azure, what we're trying to do is provide an opportunity for them to come into a secure environment on either, any one of those public cloud platforms uh, where we could bring them in and help them you know, with the billing part of this too, but also come up with a security mechanism that makes it a secure environment uh, for them to do their work. So that's the vision uh, as we go forward. Uh,